Hi friends, welcome to reading time. Today we're going to be reading the book When I Was Eight. This is based on a true story and written by the person who is also the main character. I'm excited to read it with you. Today as we read, I want you to be listening for what are the character traits of the main character. How do you know that this main character is strong or brave or thoughtful or smart? We have a dog joining us. Judy can't get enough of you guys. We'll be doing a graphic organizer with this story after we finish. For now, please enjoy the book. When I Was Eight, written by Christy Jordan Fenton and Margaret Pokiak Fenton. Art by Gabrielle Grimard. I knew many things when I was eight. I knew how to keep the sled dogs quiet while father snuck up on caribou and to bring the team to him after a kill. I knew the sun slept in the winter and woke in the summer. And I knew that when the sun warmed, Arctic Ocean shrugged off its slumbering ice we would cross it to trade furs with the outsiders. But I did not know how to read the outsiders' books. It was not enough to hear them from my older sister, Rosie. I longed to read them for myself. Although I begged like a hungry dog after scraps, father would not let me go to the outsider school like Rosie. He knew things about the school that I did not. But my name is Uli Mon. That's Uli Mon, the stubborn stone that sharpens the half moon Ulu knife used by our women. I wore away at him all through the winter. And when the sun awoke again and we traveled to trade with the outsiders, he reluctantly left me at their school. A black cloaked nun cut my hair. I felt naked as my braids fell to the floor. Stripped of my warm parka, I was made to wear a thin pinafore and scratchy underwear with stockings too small to stay above my knees. My Inuit name was taken and I was to be called Margaret. All I had left was a beautiful book my sister read me about a girl named Alice. I hugged it to my chest and tried to be brave like the girl in the story. Every day for weeks, we woke very early to do chores. Instead of sitting in desks, we scrubbed the floor beneath them. We washed walls and dishes and laundry, and then we went to church and kneeled on our already aching knees to clean our souls. I worked hard, but it brought me no closer to being able to read. When the first skiff of snow returned and my hopes were nearly dead, the kindly head nun led us to a classroom and told us to be seated. At last, we were going to read. 
behind the teacher's desk sat the nun who had cut my hair. And I didn't want her for a teacher, but I sat very tall so she would know I was eager. A few older girls raised their hands, so I did too. The nun laughed and motioned for me to stand and read. Read? I couldn't even speak English. I scowled at her as the others giggled. Instead of learning to read that day, I spent the rest of class with my nose in the corner and my stockings slouched around my ankles. I wonder how the main character is feeling right now. Take a minute to think how Uliman is feeling. Can you relate to the main character? Have you ever felt that way? We'll continue. The nun constantly gave me extra chores as part of my education, she said. But though my muscles ached from the hard work, I could barely keep my eyes open. She could not wear out my determination. I used every task as an opportunity to learn new words. I studied each letter of the alphabet before wiping it from the board. I looked at the labels on cleaning supplies and sounded out the words. I even studied the writing beneath pictures in the hall. These things improved my reading, but I longed to read an actual book. My book. One evening, I hurried through my supper of cabbage soup, planning a hasty escape. I couldn't wait anymore. I dashed into the hall but the nun was waiting for me. Not so fast, Margaret. There are pots to be scrubbed, she said in a threatening tone and marched me to the kitchen. With my arms and scalding water up to my elbows, I couldn't hold back my frustration. I could be reading, I muttered. What? The nun demanded, her shoes creaking as she crossed the kitchen. She pinned me against the sink. Slowly, a smile spread across her thin lips. Fetch me a cabbage from the basement, she ordered. The author is building suspense. I wonder what will happen next. Do you have a prediction? Take a minute and think about what you predict will happen next. Let's continue. I'd heard stories of children who disappeared in that dark cavern. I descended each step deliberately, hiding my fear. My hands quickly found a cabbage in the shadows and I scurried up the stairs. But she slammed the door, shutting out all light. I pulled the handle. It was locked. A scream built in my chest, but I held it in. I closed my eyes, 
pulled up my stockings and breathed deeply until I could feel my father's presence. He wrapped his arms around me in the darkness and spelled out my Inuit name to him, whispering, O L E M A U N. His proud smile made me stronger, so I worked back through the name of my distant home. B a N K S I S L A N D. I spelled so many things from home and was starting on the title of my book. A L I When the door opened squeezed past the nun and returned to the sink. Her angry black eyes raised goosebumps on the back of my shaved neck, but she could not make me cry. Oliman used a different type of technique to calm her body down when she was feeling scared. Instead of breathing like we normally do, she imagined her father hugging her. She also started spelling some words. I wonder, how did that help her calm down in a scary time? If you are feeling scared, is there something that you could do similarly to calm your body down? Let's continue. When I returned to the dorm room that night, all the girls were giddy. Everyone had beautiful, new, dark stockings. I pulled off my old ones, took my place in front of the nun, held out my hands, and closed my eyes. The nun cackled loudly as she handed my pair to me. Laughter instantly filled the room. They're, they're red, I stammered in disbelief. Only circus clowns wore red stockings. I ran to my bed and opened my book. I stared at the letters, holding back my tears, until those letters became words, which grew into a familiar story. I could almost hear my sister's voice reading about the cruel queen, and I let the story carry me far away from the laughter. I feel sad for Oliman. How do you feel? Take a minute to think about how the character is acting. Is this a trait of the character? Can you think of a word to describe Oliman in this moment? Let's continue. The next morning, I crept quietly to breakfast, but an older girl saw me and called out, Fatty legs! as bits of food fell from her mouth. Fatty face, I shouted back. F-A-T-T. -T. The nun swooped in. If you cannot get along with others, you can tend to the laundry, she hissed. I entered the laundry and stood beside the large vat with the fire crackling beneath it. And then the idea came to me. I knew what to do with my stockings. I burned them to ashes. I felt like Alice after a bite of magic cake, as large as the entire room.
When the nun saw my bare legs, she exploded. Margaret, put on your stockings, she demanded. I set my jaw and I crossed my arms in front of my chest. I can't. Why not? I just can't. Her face grew very red and she ordered everyone to search the room. Like the queen's henchmen in my book, they scurried around, upturning everything. Books were torn from shelves. Blankets were torn from beds. No one was calling me fatty legs now. And no amount of searching could ever bring those stockings back. They won't find the stockings. Do you remember why? That's right. They won't find them because Uliman decided to burn them into ashes while she was doing the laundry. Let's continue. <laughs> The nun snarled when I was allowed another pair. In my new, thick, gray stockings, I felt victorious. But when I strode into class the next day, the nun slammed a book on my desk. It was a green reader, like the older girls used. Page 34, she said. She wanted to cut me down to size. I opened the book, nervousness swelling in my throat. I looked at the words and began slowly twisting my tongue around the consonants and forming my mouth around the vowels. By the second paragraph, I confidently sliced through the words without a single moment of hesitation. There was no stopping me. When I finished, I looked up, but the nun was facing the blackboard. Sit down, Margaret, she said. I felt a great happiness inside that I dared not to show. I quietly took my seat. I was Olimon, conqueror of evil, reader of books. I was a girl who traveled to a strange and faraway land to stand against a tyrant, just like Alice. And like Alice, I was brave, clever, and as unyielding as the strong stone that sharpens an ulu. I finally knew this, like I knew many things, because now I could read. That's the end of the story. This is a story of triumph. Uliman is not treated as she should be. Instead of being defeated, she works very hard to become a reader. We're going to spend some time in the next movie thinking about what character traits Uliman shows throughout this book. Take a big deep breath as we end our reading and move on to our next work. Inhale and exhale. The last thing we're going to do today is we are going to look at a character trait chart. 
you'll recognize this from school. I want you to find three character traits that you think describe Uliman. Choose three and explain why. Send me a voice recording or a written example, and I look forward to seeing what you think.